When I said I wanted to become a comedian, everybody laughed at me. Well, they're not laughing now, are they? <laughs>
man. Well, not to say I work with wood, which used to amuse Bob Hughes, because I know how hard we've worked on the jokes. But he thought it was hilarious. And then one day in the Granada canteen over Shepherd's Pie, he picked up a napkin and doodled this. Cole, meeting contestants he doesn't take to. And that's that, you. And, that, and that's me <laughs> in the mood when I go back to the dressing room saying, that man is not cooperative. And, and that's a napkin, is it? That's a napkin. And here we are now, you and I looking at it 23 years later. Yeah. And it was a doodle on a napkin between mouthfuls. Just got his pen out just to amuse himself. That was 2000, yeah? The year 2000. Yeah. Um, three years before he died. Yeah. You know, and we are talking now, talking about Bob Mungus, we're talking about someone who died 20 years ago now. Yeah. Well, he was a fantastic uh, yeah. comedian. I mean, uh, one of his last shows was just, um, you know, all the comedians of the day wanted to be there to see the master. That yeah, he was he was in terminal decline, and it was his last. Uh, and he was quite blue as well, wasn't he? In his stage show, he'd always been saucy on stage in cabaret late night. Could you hand back, or could you turn off your vibrator, please, for me? <laughs> that was the great thing about Bob Monkhouse, you know. Uh, he could do a lunchtime show like Wipeout, and the material would be of a lunchtime standard. Yeah. Go and see him at the Lakeside yeah. or Jollies. Uh, in late night cabaret, yeah. and it will be much more robust material. My brother has a pit bull, they're terrifying. Pit bull terriers are terrifying, and when they bite people, what do they do? They take them to the vet and castrate them. Excuse me, that's the wrong end. <laughs> Pull their teeth out. If you take the bollocks off, you've nowhere to kick them. Because that, he pitched it up to that audience. Yeah. And what's brilliant about Bob Monkhouse, when I think which is something that contributes to his longevity of career, is that he could change styles and the pitch of the joke, but never lose that essential Bob Monkhouse-ness. Yeah. It was always Bob Monkhouse. Yeah. And there aren't many comics who can change gear like that to suit the audience. So, so Colin, what's, what's that? Well, this is a script folder with Bob's name on it, as you can see, embossed. Um, written his name there, just in case he forgets who he is. And what I've put inside it is an original handwritten radio script for a series he, uh, he wrote and starred in called Mostly Monkhouse. Also starred David Jason before Del Boy fame. So this is a, ra a radio show? A radio yeah? show, yeah. David Jason starred and Josephine Tewson, the three-hander, and Bob wrote the script, and in doing so, you can see this is the work in progress before it was typed, Yeah. to go to the producer, and... How did you get hold of that? Well, when, when Bob died, uh, and Bob's widow died, uh, Bob's daughter Abigail, knowing my close relationship, working relationship with Bob... As a scriptwriter. As a scriptwriter. Uh, she said, can you come and help me sort out this material because I, I, I'm struggling here. And Bob threw nothing away. The reams and reams and reams of paper, you could fill the hall in which we're standing. Yeah. He threw nothing away. In fact, I always say his bet noir was the dustman because he threw nothing away. I mean, letters going back to his teenage years, he kept. So he was a proper hoarder. Oh yeah, absolutely. And videos, he videoed. Yeah, his collection of videos was prodigious. He, he was the first person to have Lenny Henry's... Yeah. Uh, first, first ever appearance, wasn't it? Yeah, by all accounts, there was one existing copy, an off-air VHS recording of Lenny Henry's first appearance on New Faces yeah. as a performer, a young teenager. And for some reason, ATV didn't have it, and maybe they'd wiped it, they certainly lost it. The only tape that existed of Lenny's performance was in the Bob Monkhouse off-air VHS collection. Because yeah. Bob was, he was obsessive. He wanted to know everything about pop culture, television culture. He wanted to be across everything because if he, he felt that that informed his comedy. Because I think when he went on holidays, he'd tell people, he'd look at the Radio Times and he'd highlight upcoming shows yeah. to make sure he hadn't missed stuff. There was a video shop in Leighton Buzzard, I think it was Leighton Buzzard, that he would fax and say, could you record me these? and they would record shows off air for him. Occasionally I'd get a phone call from Barbados saying, oh, there's this series that David Renwick's written, can you grab me the first two? And Bob being a great fan of David Renwick. Bob also appeared in, in uh, uh, Jonathan Creek, which, which was written by David Renwick, and Bob was thrilled 
to um, to show his acting chops in a script written by the great Renwick, uh, who Bob was a great admirer of. Uh, well, that's the, thing, that's the thing about Bob, you know, not only was he a game show host, for which he, during our period he was well known, he was also an actor, wrote radio scripts, wrote television scripts, wrote jokes, one of the best jokes, joke writers you've ever known, and it was a great inspiration to me. This is the other thing, another side bump. When you were working with Bob, you always had to bring your own your own A game to the table. You couldn't bluff it, because you'd know a bluff it. And so you were always on your toes with Bob. But he appreciated the industry because he knew, as a joke writer, he knew how much effort had gone into a joke that you tried to put together. If it did work, it didn't matter. He could see that, he once said to me, he said, uh, it glistens with sweat, this joke called, but it doesn't seem. When I said I wanted to become a comedian, everybody laughed at me. Well, they're not laughing now, are they? So, as well as a cartoonist, a joke writer, a uh, game show host, actor, he was also a wonderful stand-up performer in late night cabaret and private functions. And I think standing on, on that stage with those boards under his feet, performing joke material to an audience, that was when he was at his happiest. The Essex County Council have announced they're spending two million pounds a year treating alcoholics. Isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> it's high time those alcoholics bought their own drinks. <laughs> People say, you know, how, why did he do those game shows? Well, he did those game shows because it meant camera time. It meant that he was on television, which meant that he was a familiar face. So when he was appearing at a nightclub, Wakefield Theatre Club or wherever, sell more tickets. That's great. Oh, love, Marvel. Thank you very much. You know, applause like that means only one thing to me. It means we've fixed the sign. <laughs> So he used television as an advertising medium to promote selling Bob the off the telly. Exactly that. Celebrity Squares was one of his, uh, well, it was a golden shot, wasn't there, golden I think? shot originally. That's when I first sent jokes to him, when I was in, in my teens. Golden shot, Celebrity Squares, and then he went on to the BBC and did Bob's yeah. Full House. And... Well, Celebrity Squares then begat Family Fortunes. That's right. Then he jumped to Bob's Full House and Opportunity Knocks and those shows at the BBC. Yeah. Came back to Central for $64,000 question and Bob's Your Uncle. Yeah. And then gadded about a bit at the BBC again for Bob Monkhouse on the spot. Yeah. London Weekend for an audience. He did an audience with, with as well, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, it was a huge success. LWT, I think it was. Yeah, then back to Granada, uh, as we've just discussed, uh, for a, a lunchtime show with Warner Yeah. Uh, Eamon Holmes said it right in a, docu in a documentary series that I produced about Bob's TV career. Eamon Holmes said, he said, why did Bob want to do a lunchtime show? because it had never been done before. And that's, that's what it was, you know. Yeah. Uh, he loved to explore new avenues of television. Yeah. And bear in mind, lunchtime shows now, game shows, and daytime shows, they are, they're, they're all the rage. But back in those late 90s, when we were doing Wipeout lunchtime, it had never been done before, really. If you're enjoying this, smash that like button. And if you want to see hours of content that's similar to this, then check out the rest of my channel. This is stuff on records, vinyl, and other pop culture stuff. So subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future stuff, and do what's right. Subscribe. Subscribe to the Sky as YouTube channel. And this, taken in all oh, the year 2000, three years before he died, and that's Bob and I backstage at Granada doing a show called Wipeout and the makeup artist took a quick snap and you know having worked with Bob for 40 years there are only about three or four photographs I've got of me and him together really it's weird isn't it so that must be cherished yeah absolutely right. well look thank you for your memories and time and uh, it's fantastic to see the book well thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to give one last flag a wave of the flag to a comedian who was a one of a kind and we shall not see his like again. <laughs>